Hello, and welcome to Learn Stage Now with the Zebra Knowledge Center. This series covers everything you need to know to stage Zebra Mobile computers efficiently, productively, and effortlessly using our Stage Now tool. In this episode, you will learn how to deploy an application on your device using Stage Now. If you're new to Stage Now, be sure to check out our Stage Now overview and Stage Now Essentials videos. They are very short, but contain important information you want to know when working with Stage Now. Okay, let's begin. Here is a heads up of what is covered and how it is covered. Overall, it should take no more than 30 minutes to go through all of it. We'll start with a diagram and then move to the tool itself. Let's go! Before moving on to deployment, let's quickly review the configuration workflow. When you push some simple and small settings, the size of the data is usually small enough to be directly encoded in the barcode of NFC tag. When you scan that, the Stage Now client decodes the data and performs necessary actions. This mode can fully work offline and is portable. Now, how many barcodes will it take to encode a 50 meg application package? When you need to deal with large amounts of data, Stage Now uses file downloads. To enable that, Stage Now automatically sets up an FTP server on your workstation, which runs whenever Stage Now is running. The barcode, or NFC tag, then only contains references to the files on that server and necessary actions. Stage Now client will connect to the server and carry out the instructions. Of course, it means that you will have to have a working network connection between the device and your Stage Now workstation. And Stage Now must be running every time you stage a device with a profile that contains settings in the deployment section. Also note that if your workstation acquires a different IP address via DHCP, for example, you may need to regenerate the barcode sheet. On the positive side, Stage Now manages the files on the server automatically, so you don't have to worry about it. And if your computer has more than one IP address, it will warn you and prompt you to choose one. That's pretty much all you need to know before moving to the practical part of this episode. Here's what we will do. Our application of choice will be Enterprise Home Screen, EHS, which can be downloaded for free from support.symbol.com. We assume that the device is fresh out of the box, so for any file downloads, it needs to be connected to a WLAN to have access to the StageNow server. In order to get EHS installed on the device properly, the device needs to do the following. 1. Download the EHS installer APK file for MDM deployment. Note that EHS also has a version for manual deployment. That one will not work since it requires user interaction. 2. Install EHS from that APK. 3. Deploy the EHS config file. 4. Run EHS on the device so it picks up and processes the configuration. 5. Reboot the device so it comes up with EHS pre-configured and ready to roll. OK, let's do it. Here's stage now, already in admin mode. Note that it shows the current IP address in the top right. I have already selected the one I want to use. Let's create a new profile using the Manage Applications wizard. The wizard allows you to install, uninstall, and run applications, download files, or any combination of the above, plus a bit more. Let's check it out. Our application of choice will be Enterprise Home Screen, EHS. So, we'll have our profile deploy EHS. If our device is fresh out of the box, we need to have it connected to a network. How else will it reach the file server? Now, 
we'll use a little shortcut to save time and effort. Remember all those Wi-Fi settings we were saving for reuse in the previous video? Time to put them to use. Just ensure you're selecting the right ones for right steps. See how quick that was? Check the previous video on how to connect to a wireless network with StageNow if you want to learn more about these settings. If you have the RD config section, you can skip this, as it is used for legacy device staging, which we will cover in a dedicated video. OK, now we got to the actual deployment flow. Note that this time, our profile actually has a deployment section at the top. The Uninstall Application feature is useful when you need to either explicitly uninstall the app, you can use staging profiles just for that, or when your app does not support upgrades well, you have to uninstall it before reinstalling the new version. Please keep in mind that when you uninstall the application on Android, all private data and settings for that app are gone, with a few exceptions. Beware. Note that at the very bottom, you have another uninstall prompt. It's a feature allowing you to uninstall multiple packages in one go. Useful when you have app suites, plugins, prerequisites, etc. We have nothing to uninstall now, so let's click No and move on. We definitely want to install an application. Click Yes and continue until you see the Install Method step. If your APK, Application Installer, is already present on the device, you may skip download. Since our device is fresh out of the box, we'll want to download it. Here we will set up the download. We'll also save this setting in case we need it later. The most important thing is to ensure that you have target path configured correctly. For example, if your device doesn't have an SD card, or if you have to use a different path. Also, ensure you have deleted the hint. I'll choose the APK file from my computer. Stage Now will automatically put it onto the FTP server once the profile is done. Now, we actually instruct the device to install the APK. We'll also save this one for reuse. Note that you don't have to do anything else here. It's pre-populated with data from the previous step. Now, StageNow offers you to download any additional files to go with your app. In my case, it would be the config file. Save the setting for the future. The config has to go here, slash enterprise, slash USR, slash enterprise home screen dot XML. Beware, the path directory must already exist or staging will fail. The same applies to the APK deployment and any other file operations unless explicitly stated otherwise. Choose the file. Note that at the bottom, you again have the option of deploying another file. We don't need it though. Let's proceed. Now, we can launch the app we've just installed, or any other app for that sake. You can even create a staging profile that only launches an existing app if you need to. We will run EHS here. Android doesn't make running apps easy. However, there are no EXE files, no shortcuts, command line parameters. Instead, you have to craft something called an intent, pass it to an application, addressing it by its package name which will differ from the APK file name, and setting additional parameters, such as what feature of application you want to invoke. 
All this makes this mechanism very flexible and powerful, but also quite complex for the beginner. Your best bet is to check application documentation or contact developer for this information. In case of EHS, the required data is in the user guide, from which we will simply copy-paste. Package name, main activity class name, That will run EHS and complete the setup. If you want to learn more, Google for Harnessing Android Intents. This will bring you to an article that discusses intents, how to use them, and how to extract the data necessary to craft one directly from the APK files. Now, you are asked if you would like to install an application again. Here, the wizard is prompting you to install another application, should you need it. We do not, so let's move on. Now, the wizard asks you if you want the device to connect to another network after it's done with application deployment. When would this be useful? Well, for example, when you are staging a device that will work on a different site over a different WLAN, or when your staging network is different than your general production network. If you don't need it, just leave it as it is. The device will remain at its staging network. Finally, we have an option to reboot the device, which we definitely need. Everything is pre-configured here. Save these settings as well. This is it. We've made it through. We can review and edit steps, quite a few of those in two sections. You can even provide a detailed description to the profile. Complete and publish. And stage. Even with external files, We've got so many steps, we need two 2D barcodes. Scan and see what happens. What you will see is that we have successfully deployed the APK and installed the app. However, the deployment is not quite complete. EHS is not our default launcher. If you run it though, you will see that the app is there and our custom config is in place. Thus, we should have used a different wizard that allows configuring the default launcher, such as configure device or the expert mode, which will be the topic of our next video. But enough for now. Okay, that was it. Now let's play a game that will help you check what you've learned. You will see a question pop up. Pause the video and think on an answer. Then unpause and check. Let's see how many of them can you get right. Let's go.
That was the last one. Hope you did well. Congratulations and thank you for watching this video. You can now deploy a fully configured application to an out-of-box device. Check out the other videos to learn about various staging use cases, best practices, and advanced features of StageNow.